Um, I'm here to talk about our use of the collector for ArcGIS at the City of Edinburgh Council. We've been using the collector in projects for about three or four years now. And by far our biggest project we've done this year is to do a citywide audit of all the drop curbs, raised tables, guardrails, and residential crossovers in Edinburgh. I'll get onto what they are in a minute. First of all, I'll just give some, an overview of some of our earlier collector for ArcGIS projects, and then I'll focus on this dropped curbs project. <coughs> so uh, our interest in mobile data collection from Esri predates the collector, goes back to ArcPad, which I don't really have much time to talk about, um, and also the ArcGIS for Android app, which we used in a, a project in 2013 when we were looking to cut grounds maintenance costs and improve biodiversity with the Living Landscapes project, or as it's known to the public, the cutting the grass less often project. Um, at the time, we would have used the collector, but it was only supporting points, so uh, we had to use the, the ArcGIS for Android app because it was using uh, polygons. The collector now sports polygons, so um, we would use it for polygon projects going forward. And we used, um, we used the Android app to identify areas where we could potentially change how we maintain parks and green space. For example, changing standard amenity grass to low maintenance grass, uh, which we're now rebranding as naturalized grass, just to throw the public off the scent of our true motivations. Um, to change annual meadows into perennial meadows, and a few, a few other things that will save us some money. 200,000 pounds was targeted to be saved in the first phase of this project. We didn't quite match that in the first year, but we did remove 200,000 pounds from our budgets going forward. Also in 2013, planning, we're looking to produce supplementary planning guidance for three of the town centers identified in the local development plan. And they were looking to update the 2010 shop survey data. So we do every five years or so, we do a, a citywide survey of all the shops in Edinburgh. And we, we set them up with the collector and they went out and they, they started updating that 2010 data. Unfortunately, when it came around to the 2015 full citywide survey, they decided not to take up the collector um, for, for the project and just continue with their, con with their, their own methods. Um, and then presentation seats. So presentation seats. Are, are these seats that you see in parks, the benches that are donated by members of the public, for uh, usually for a family member or a close friend who's died. Usually they're for random members of the public. Very occasionally they're for members of overrated rock bands. Uh, very personal opinion. <laughs> and uh, when, we, when we were approached by Parks and Green Space for the presentation seats project, they had beforehand they had data sitting in a lot of different spreadsheets and they were getting a lot of complaints from the public for missing benches or damaged benches. People would phone up and say, oh, look, the bench isn't in the normal location, do you know where it is? And because, uh, because of the state of the data, we wouldn't always know exactly where the bench was. Maybe it was in getting refurbished or not. So we decided to use Collector for ArcGIS and ArcGIS Online to do condition surveys and then for ongoing data management. And you can see the sort of the sort of detail, or maybe you can't actually, um, but the sort of detail that they're they're uh, capturing here is the the seat type, the plaque text, if there's any structural damage, what the percentage of paint and varnish cover is, and these condition surveys have been have been really good and really handy. Um, that that was four years ago we started that project and we're still using it. It was supposed to be migrated over into our confirm asset management system uh, along with another. It's used by quite a few other service areas, but they, they like the collector and ArcGIS online solution so much they've, they've not migrated it over, over to that other system. So now we um, get on to the transport accessibility survey, also known as the drop curb survey. This was a citywide audit of dropped curbs where the curb comes down to meet the road. Uh, absent drop curbs where there isn't one, but there should be. Raised tables where the road comes up to meet the pavement. Guardrails, uh, the plan is to remove most of the guardrails from the city over the coming years. And residential crossovers where a vehicle needs to cross the pavement to come down to meet, meet the road. 
the funding for this project came from the Scottish Government Smarter Choices, Smarter Places project, and we were looking to improve accessibility for wheelchair users, for blind people. And the involvement of the collector only really came about after a chance conversation that I had with a colleague in transport where she was planning on putting the whole project out to tender. And I said to her, oh, hey, look, we've got this thing called the collector. We've used it in a few other projects. Um, it would, really, it would really suit this project. We could do everything in-house. All you would need is some tablets and some staff to do it. And because we already had the funding available and because we didn't really have the staff time, we went out to tender anyway, but we just revised our tender plans and we were only looking for surveyors and tablets. We only had uh, one bidder for the contract, but they were IIC technologies and they were excellent to work with. I'm not just saying that because some of them are here today. Uh, uh, genuinely, they were good. To, uh, um. so, when, uh, so when we were setting up the project, initially we only had funding to do phases one to four, which are these areas on the map. And this had to be completed. Well, we started surveying at the start of January and it had to be finished by the end of the financial year. And we were waiting on more funding to do phase five, which is pretty much the rest of the city. I was provided with a list of features and information from a transport officer as to what, what they were wanting captured. And I turned those, that information into a file geodatabase with various feature classes and attributes. Uh, that whole process was expertly demonstrated by SIPA there, so I won't bother going over it. But um, after we took the file geodatabase, I published it to ArcGIS Online, created a web map with it, added in some reference layers, and then sent the transport officer out to test the process because the amount of data getting captured was going to be quite extensive and there was going to be a photo attached to every feature. We wanted to make the process as streamlined as possible so that we could make sure that these phases one to four were going to get captured by the end of the financial year. So Adrian went out and he, he tested what I'd done and he gave me some suggestions for improvements and corrections. I made those, he went out, he re retested it, made a couple more adjustments. And then we were ready to bring in uh, the surveyors with IIC. So I'll just kind of skip over to ArcGIS Online. Uh, to give you a demonstration of what, um, what sort of detail we were capturing here. So the, the green points are the dropped curves. And we were, we were asking them to capture uh, unique street reference numbers, the crossing type, uh, whether the drop curb was present or absent, the weighting and loading restrictions on the ground at that location, whether the weighting and loading restrictions, the yellow lines, was, whether they covered the extent of the drop curb, uh, whether the weighting and loading restriction information on the ground matched the, the data in the back office. So, one of, the, uh, one of the reference layers that I added in was, was, our, was our data for, for waiting and loading. Whether the dropped curb was on a pedestrian refuge island, whether the dropped curb was on a pedestrian desire line, that's the line that you would naturally take as you're walking along the pavement and go to cross the road. Uh, the upstand measurement is the height of the lower part of the curb. The, uh, the gradient, so according to the guidelines, uh, a gradient of one in tw less than one in 12 is what we're looking for. Anything steeper than, anything greater than one in 12 is too steep. So we didn't, because, because these surveyors are having to capture so many features, we didn't really want them to accurately give us the, 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 the gradient. What we asked them was if they were to take the height of the dropped curb and multiply that by 12, that's about a meter. So if this slope that's going down to the dropped curb was more, was more than a meter or about a meter, then that gradient is okay. And if it's less than a meter, just mark that down as steep. They were also capturing the gradient of these side slopes here. Um, if there's tactile paving present, the, the knobbly paving for, for blind people, if there's a tail for the, the tactile paving, uh, what condition it is in. A lot of these things are, are judgment calls getting made by the surveyors, so we provided them with training where we had them in and we showed them photos of this is how, we, how you, you would, this is how you would call tactile paving that's in good condition, this is tactile paving that's average, and this is tactile paving that's in poor condition. 
and uh, the, also an explanation of how they wanted to capture the gradients. And there was a field for comments, and also and of the teacher, we asked for a photo. I won't go through the raised tables, but it was mostly the same attributes, guardrails, um, the Unique Street reference number, the type of guardrail, the apparent purpose, that it was at a, jun a junction, a pedestrian crossing, a footway or a carriageway entry point. And photos again. And for residential crossovers, we had some attributes that we wanted them to capture, but after, after a while we realized that all of our residential crossovers were coming in too steep according to the guidelines that we were working to. So after a while we said to the surveyors, look, just capture the geometry and, and don't worry about the attributes when we're dealing with this in the future. We'll just assume that all of our residential crossovers are, are going to need to get looked at. And when, uh, when the surveyors were capturing the geometry, initially we said to them in the tender document that we wanted accuracy down to half a meter. And in the kickoff meeting, they said to us, well, if we use some highly accurate GPS, which you can do with the collector, you can just pair it via Bluetooth to your, to your tablet. Um, then what you're going to find is that that data is not going to accurately sit on top of those ordnance survey maps because they're not quite as accurate as you'd think. So it would be better if we captured the locations just relative to the features on your ordnance survey maps. And that was, that was ideal for us. Um, one, one drawback to using the collector, say, over, um, over a different, I, I guess, with, with IIC technologies, they were telling us that usually they have a lot of surveying experience from Ordnance Survey, and they usually send their surveyors out with tough books and ArcGIS on the tough books. And um, using the collector, they were finding that on certain streets or in parks, they didn't really have enough reference features where they could they could accurately pinpoint the map, uh, pinpoint the feature on the map. So they were having to get the ruler out and use the ruler on top of the surface of their iPads to to locate these features. So there was one drawback there with the collector. A few other issues we had that there's no labeling in the collector. So for getting the unique street reference numbers from our road asset data, I had to build a cache to get that data in there. I accidentally did it in ArcGIS Online, which is <coughs> uh, slightly expensive for, for doing it, uh, wherever you are, Roddy. <laughs> uh, we had problems syncing large amounts of data. So initially, we'd had, uh, initially, the surveyors were just using the default camera resolution, which was a high resolution. And they were working offline. And at the end of the day, they were going back to back to their homes to use the, an internet connection to sync all this information back into the hosted services in Ar ArcGIS Online. And they, some, sometimes it was failing. And we logged a support call with Esri and they said, oh, actually, if you're, if you're, logging, if you're syncing too much data at one time, then, then it will fail. They said they recommended that we, they wouldn't uh, support more than 20 megabytes of data syncing at one time. I think we were able to actually sync about 60 or 70 megabytes in one time. But the solution was to just change the camera resolution to, to produce smaller images, and then thereafter we didn't have any syncing problems. Uh, we also sometimes found that their surveyors were getting errors when they were trying to download a cache and the reference data for the following day. Um, Again, we logged a support call with Esri, and they were really good at sort, uh, providing the solution, which is perhaps some of our reference layers had geometry errors in them. So I went and checked, and right enough, one or two of the layers did. So I fixed those geometry errors, republished the, uh, the feature services with them, and those downloading problems were resolved. Um, another, another issue that we had was the rain. So sometimes with the iPads, these guys were used to, used to working with tough books. Um, but if there was too much rain, then they had to stop working with the iPads. And occasionally the software would crash. They were saying, particularly if they were moving in or, in or out or uh, walking too fast, <laughs> apparently. So what next? The, we're going to add the data and maintain it in our uh, road services confirm asset management system. 
We'll also do a desktop analysis of the survey to prioritize improvements and how we can make, uh, we can Im improve the city for accessibility. Once these improvements have been uh, prioritized, then this will tie in with some of our smaller street works and our bigger capital renewal schemes. So when people are coming along to resurface their pavement and they'll be able to look at the data and go, all right, okay, this, this drop curb is, has got cracked tactile paving. We need to replace that at the same time. We need to make sure that that is not as steep as it has been for the slope going down to the drop curb. So in summary, um, the collector is, like, is really quick and easy to configure. It's proved very useful so far for the presentation seats and for also identifying savings for a ground maintenance project. And it worked really well with the drop curbs project. Um, it's enabled us to have cheaper project costs and the whole project will provide better accessibility in the future. One other thing to add is that IIC technologies were telling us that for certain situations, they will probably switch from using tough books to using iPads with the collector because it's lighter. Their guys, after four hours using a tough book, their backs start to get a bit sore, whereas using the iPad is much, uh, it's much easier for them to work with on, in certain situations. And also we need to promote this more internally. We've not really done any promotion internally. Um, but I'd imagine that once we do, we're going to get a lot more projects off the back of it. So thanks very much.